For over 6,000 years, man has been fascinated by the sea. Attempts to unlock the secrets of the water world have been as varied and bold as man's imagination itself. Military action, the quest for food, the desire for advancing knowledge and science, natural curiosity, and commercial gain have always fueled our desire to explore the underwater world. Around 1930, a group of spearfishing pioneers started the sport of skin diving. Armed with primitive goggles and handmade spears, they foraged the oceans in search of game. Skin diving, and goggle diving as it was known in Europe, flourished. But their explorations were dictated by the limitations of breath hold diving. And together with military divers, who were struggling with oxygen rebreathers, safe to only 30 feet, and commercial divers, encumbered with canvas suits, brass helmets, and long hoses. They tried a variety of other devices they hoped would set man free to explore the sea. In August of 1943, in the Marne River, a young French naval officer, Captain Jacques Cousteau, and engineer, Emile Gagnon, conducted the first successful test of a device called the Aqualung. A combination of a tank containing compressed air and a demand regulator, this ingenious device represented a crowning achievement for mankind. Man had finally been set free underwater. It marked the birth of an industry. Cousteau, along with his family and crew, would go on to become the strongest symbol of underwater exploration and environmental consciousness. diver was born, a term that would persist up until 1960. As marvelous as the invention of modern scuba was, the activity was limited to the military and a few resourceful persons. It took time for regulators to be manufactured and distributed. Captain Cousteau fondly remembers after shipping 10 regulators to his U.S. distribution company in 1950, the response to his request for an additional order. The market is saturated. In the 1950s, instruction was featured at compressed air stations, one of the early terms for today's retail dive centers. A variety of new gear was introduced to the diving public. Women, although in the minority, made their mark early in diving. They participated enthusiastically in spearfishing, skin diving, and lung diving, and, reflective of that era, were known as girl skin divers. Spearfishing, by both free diving and lung diving, remained the focus of the fledgling recreation and would continue in popularity throughout the next 20 years. Dive travel got its start in the 1950s as a spearfishing activity, as divers visited the Caribbean, Sea of Cortez, and the Red Sea. Underwater photography was in its infancy. In 1958, the first episode of Sea Hunt appeared on television and propelled Lloyd Bridges, Zale Perry, and scuba diving into national prominence. 
Early education was in the hands of the dive clubs, diving councils, instructors, and dive shop pioneers. Lack of a cohesive body would cause regional differences in training to persist. The 60s saw the beginning of fundamental changes that would begin to sweep diving into a mainstream activity with the creation of the first national education agencies. Scuba training was now on a positive course, but it would take nearly a decade for national certification to be universally recognized. Still, the main focus in the 60s was gaming. The macho image persisted, but change was in the wind. Other activities, driven through education and local diving groups, began to emerge, and participation became more frequent and varied. Diving equipment was undergoing transformation. Manufacturing companies actually introduced new innovative gear such as the submersible pressure gauge, single hose regulator, and the first flotation device in the 50s. Now, they sought to produce these items on a mass scale and continue the evolutionary process. By the end of the decade, scuba diving had celebrated its first major anniversary. At the dawn of the 70s, the wheels of scuba progress would take diving from a sport of hardcore enthusiasts and hunters to the broad-based recreation as we know it today. In the space of just a few years, the pioneering efforts of manufacturers, retailers, and educators suddenly seemed to gel. Industry self-regulation was developed. Certification became universally accepted, and enjoyment through safety was the first concern. Dive travel came into its own as resorts catering to scuba divers, not spear fishermen, came into vogue. Underwater photography went mainstream and eventually replaced hunting as the primary activity of traveling divers. The 70s was a decade of prolonged, sustained growth and innovation for recreational diving. By the end of the decade, diving had shed its macho image, replacing it with women divers, a growing concern over the marine environment, and a strong hint that the change had just begun. The intrigue of the underwater world reached Hollywood with a succession of documentaries and major feature productions lasting through the 80s and depicting adventure and romance. featured an explosion of fashion and color, and virtually every piece of diving equipment reflected the new color consciousness. And the 80s saw dive travel explode to the far corners of the globe, and the household names became Cayman, Bonaire, Cozumel, and the Bahamas. High energy and exciting experiences became popular, as did appreciation for the environment sparking the development of protected marine parks throughout the diving world. The 80s also saw the first enlightened solution to the U.S. Navy dive tables. First in safer tables engineered for recreational divers and then in the rapid acceptance of electronic computers. Computers made multi-day, multi-level diving possible, a distinct boon for underwater photographers and dive travelers.
the 90s finds us still in search of the best possible diving experiences and the chance for science to explore the oceans in an effort to continue to unlock their secrets. History has taught us that responsible diving is the key to enjoying the underwater world that the manfish, Captain Cousteau, opened for us for the first time in 1943. Please join us in celebrating the 50th anniversary of scuba with a deep and profound respect for the efforts of all of diving's pioneers and the continued day-to-day -day commitment of the many fine diving professionals that will make the next 50 years better, safer, and more responsible for us all.